Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome to a new episode of Stocks for Breakfast. Thank you so much for joining me today. We have a ton of stuff to cover today. We're actually going to get into a question that somebody just asked before we came on, uh, and it's in reference to having conviction on breakouts, which ironically is a topic that we discussed last night in our coaching call. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a uh, kind of a behind the scenes into last night's coaching call because it was a good one. Uh, usually lasts about an hour, hour and a half. But what's good about the Wednesday night call is that we're onboarding new members into the boot camp, which is kind of exciting because we're trying to get them up to speed as fast as possible. But the bigger questions, we had two questions I want to cover today about position sizing. Uh, and there was just a question asked uh, right here. Um, about a breakout and getting shaken out or working on trading skills. So we're actually going to take you into the new program that we're building right now uh, and take a look at a fancy PowerPoint we're going to get into. Plus, we have a ton of earnings we're going to talk about today, some opportunities on the long side looking for some follow through. Uh, MGM is one that we've had on our radar recently. We have a really incredible setup in a tech stock today. We're going to walk everybody through the sector rotation and just an absolutely amazing three days of trading heading into the FOMC. We had a lot of conversations in our call on Sunday night, actually, about whether or not we should kind of scale back heading into the FOMC. We said, no, trade confidently, and then we'll see what happens after 2 o'clock. And uh, yesterday, the announcement came out, and a lot of the swing trades just followed through in a big way. Day trades followed through in a big way. Just an amazing time to be a trader right now. I hope you're capitalizing on this. If not, here's the big thing I want to ask you. Just one big thing, and it's how I can help you, is I know we have the chat here going on. Leave comments below the video, because once the video is over, once the training is uh, the trading is done for the morning, I always go back into the into the comments and see if there's any questions. So definitely leave a comment below the video if you have a question about anything we speak about. Uh, and if you find this stuff valuable, definitely smash that like button, hit the subscribe button. Got a lot we're going to talk about today. We're going to jam a ton of stuff into this half hour. So stick around. I'll be back in just one second. Okay. So thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. We're going we're to talk about interest rates. We're going to talk about FOMC announcement. We're going to talk about stocks in play today. We're going to talk about stocks that are imploding and a big mistake that a lot of traders make that we are constantly talking them out of. We're also going to talk about Tilray stock yesterday, T-L-R-Y. Somebody brought it up yesterday in reference to looking to start uh, catching that position. We said, no, no, no. And of course, on the day that we say, no, 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 the stock bounces, <laughs> which is just the way it normally happens, right? So we're going to get into some portfolio stuff, looking at some bigger picture stuff, looking for some follow through. Uh, and I also want to talk about something about pre-market quotes. And something that's pretty interesting is we, and especially new members in the boot camp come up with this, where they're in a position and pre-market the uh, the looking at at the quote from six o'clock in the morning. Don't do that <laughs> unless there's been significant news on the stock. Don't look at a quote of pre market because there's no bids and offers in there, uh, so to speak, where the the price action is going to seem a lot different than it is during regular trading hours when everybody starts to wake up. Actual bids and offers go in there. Just so you know, market makers and specialists, especially, widen their spread after hours. And then tighten them again as activity starts again. So don't jump out of a trade just because of a quote that you see at six o'clock in the morning, especially if it's a profitable trade. And we saw that yesterday. And let me pull up the stock uh, just to give everybody an example of what I'm talking about. Um, it is this stock specifically. So, the, I mean, they actually had earnings yesterday, but it was trading down roughly uh, $2 uh, pre market. And then rallied. It was down at 29 and change and rallied all the way up to 34 and change during the day. So make sure that you understand why you're in the position in the first place. And don't let those pre-market quotes shake you out of a trade. I do want to hop on over about that question there before. Uh, yeah, I want to talk. Simon, <laughs> you were the one talking about that, right? This is a big lesson that we actually talked about in our coaching call last night, which was specifically – the proclivity of traders to want to buy a stock just because it's fallen a lot from where it was. If it's falling, there's a reason for it. And which we're going to talk about today, we're going to get a little bit into, I just want to pull this up on the screen for a second, uh, which is position sizing. Let me just make this a little bit bigger um, so that you can actually take a snapshot of that. That's some of the stuff that we had on our uh, coaching course. So you can see the kind of topics that we talk about uh, we have a private forum where we actually get in there, and last night's call was roughly an hour. But what's kind of interesting is we, we had some 
conversations last night about position sizing, both uh, how it creates a lot easier trading and after gaps, which I think is pretty important. Uh, and then talking about the day after a gap. So a couple of things I just want to touch on on that. And hopefully you took a snapshot of that. If not, I can put that back on the screen in a second. We're going to get right into the stock picks. But this is important because a big part of trading is making sure you have the right thought process heading into the day. So these are kind of like, uh, if you can imagine we're in the locker room together, we're all getting excited and, and getting in the right game plan. Position sizing when done properly. Uh, we had one member that was brand new to the boot camp and getting shaken out of good trades. And he was actually asking if he should tighten up his stop loss to either a smaller average true range number or just a smaller number in general. Uh, and I was unequivocally saying, no, 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 no. The whole point of a stop loss is to allow the stock to breathe a little bit in exchange for the next move. But if you get stopped out, that's fine. That means that something changed or at least the timing of that entry, something changed. Uh, so we had a long discussion about dollar amount that you risk per trade and then you adjust your share size for the stop loss and the entry you don't just simply tighten it up for the sake of tightening it up because you're afraid to lose money you need to have the right share size and the right distance between the entry and your stop loss to allow the stock to breathe and um it was a really interesting conversation and we finally got to the point where he was like okay i understand put my ego aside don't worry about how many shares i have on the trade worry more about uh, focusing on becoming a good trader, and then you could start to scale up um, in the trades, which actually kind of takes me down uh, to a second part of this email here, um, which is conversations that we actually have in the boot camp. Uh, and this is the big thing. This is really what we what we're all we're all striving for. All right, consistent profits with moderate share size. So this was a comment that um, Ranesh made during lunchtime yesterday in our um, boot camp community. And really what it comes down to is moderate share size simply means that you're adjusting your share size to match what you're willing to risk on the trade. I'm telling you, once you learn how to do that, everything changes. It becomes a lot less stressful. The next conversation was about adjusting your position size when you have an entry here and a stock gaps all the way up there, which we can probably talk about that on a trade today because we actually had yesterday, if you remember, we mentioned MGM and the potential breakout level that we're looking at in MGM, which was we had a pause here, but this pause was in the middle of this big trading range. So we were essentially saying we're going to wait for it to get above 49. So now it's actually blasting through 49. It's almost at 50, uh, almost at 51. So two dollars higher than the actual entry that we were looking for. So because of that gap, now if you could imagine, here's the target, right? Here's your entry. Here's your expected target. Because of the gap, you've kind of eaten up some of that potential reward. And now you have to adjust your initial position sizing, which is your initial risk, because some of that reward potential has already been taken up. So we had a conversation with Pam about that last night, that there's two steps to the trade. The first part is acknowledging the fact that some of the reward was taken up. So you go in with a little bit less on your initial share size. But here's the thing, and I just want to go back to that email to really bring this point home, which is over here. Um, which was the second part, the importance of the day after the gap. So first we talked about position sizing and targets for the gap and how you make that adjustment. But then we talked about the importance after the gap. And this is critically important. So essentially what we're looking for is, let's say in a stock like MGM today or, or um, any other stock that's gapped recently, it's the second day where we get conviction that smart money stepped up. If you remember, a lot of what we do, we, we constantly talk about it's our job to spot the smart money, which is otherwise known as order flow. And then we're looking for follow through. So get out of the language of good trade, bad trade. It's we found the order flow and did it follow through or not? And did we trade flawlessly? Hey, Solomon's here. <laughs> and that's really the thought process we want to have. So if you think about a gap and you think about your initial position, which is just kind of simple, right? It moved a little too far. So I don't want to take that full risk. The day after the gap, is really what we're looking for to say, okay, they stepped up on day one. Are they coming back? Today, we're going to pay attention to that in MGM with today, Thursday, and Friday's trading. So you have to now, if that second day gap holds, you could feel a little bit more conviction with adding the rest of their shares back and then looking for a little bit of a bigger profit target because now they stepped in. And the reason I'm saying that for the second day is because if you think about what's happening on a gap, and this is getting to the question on conviction before, once you have that gap and you have follow through, now you can actually expand 
your profit target because the stock's doing exactly what you want it to do. So it's kind of cool how you start to put those pieces together. But I want to take that a step further, which is I want to show this PowerPoint, uh, which hopefully will address the um, question before. So if you want, you can take a snapshot of this. And this has to do with conviction. You can see this is actually in our, our new training that we're coming out that's um, in the boot camp right now, which is stacking the order flow. And the whole point of share size, the whole point of follow through, the whole point of I'm taking a trade as soon as I put this trade on is you start on the bottom and you look at how big of a picture is going on in the market. And the more of these pieces you put together, the longer you can hold the trade, the more you can add position size to that trade, the more the stock pushes and pauses, you can start to add to that trade. Maybe even have more stocks in that specific industry group, the more you have of these pieces together. So essentially what we start to do is we start to work every single day Everything starts out with the weekly charts and how we're looking at the market. So we're starting out with the SPY. Is the SPY well bid? Is the SPY breaking out? Is the SPY in a bullish price action? The answer obviously right now is yes. Five weeks of amazing price action. Then you head on over to the Qs. Are we seeing the same thing? Yes, five weeks. Then you head on over to the Dow. And yes, five weeks. So the point that I'm getting across here is the first thing you need to do before you even start to look at a stock, before you look at anything, you want to start to stack the order flow and what is going on in the major indices. You get a feel for that. Then you next want to start to line up what sectors are lining up in sync with the bigger picture. And as we've been talking about, hopefully you've been taking advantage of it. We're going to, we're going to break down these sectors again today. Consumer cyclical healthcare. We're going to work our way over into industrials. They're starting to perk their way up the list. You go to the market, you get a bias for the market. You get a bias for follow through. You get a bias for direction. Great. Now I have a feel for that. Now I'm going to move over and see what's in sync. And then I'm going to go down into individual industry groups or stocks, which is you work your way up that pyramid. That's the easy part of trading. OK, and I, and I don't say that lightly. I'm very careful about what I say. When I use the word easy, I mean it. The hard work is in the prep. The hard work is understanding what to look at. That's the perfect scenario, right? So I'm going to ask you right now, did you have a great five weeks of trading? Did you have a great October into now the first week of November? Have you been making money? Have you been trading with conviction? Because everything on this period mid right now, except for maybe energy stocks, they're kind of working their way down. Again, we could just take a quick look at that. You can see energy went from the top of the list to the bottom of the list which is why we track this every day. And I make this the first thing that we're talking about. If you are doing well right now, that means you have some semblance of what's on this pyramid. That means that you have some, either it's intuitive or, or you're actually going out of your way like we do in the boot camp. We're actually stacking this every day where the first thing happens. The challenge that a lot of traders have is when this is not obvious and the Dow is up, the NASDAQ's down, the S&P's kind of doing nothing, the industry groups are red, green, red, green, red, green. Then you got to take it a step further where if the market is not obvious, your conviction level can still be a little bit higher, but now you're going sector and industry group specific. So you really need to understand that you want a solid base underneath your argument. And the more pieces of what you see on the screen, the easier it is to say, I see the trade, I'm putting it on because I know what I'm doing and everything's lining up. The only other question after that, after stacking the order flow is tape reading which is understanding how much profit potential is left in that trade. So that's the last part, which is now I understand order flow. I understand how to track sectors. I understand um, which stocks in those industry groups. And we're going to talk about electric vehicle charging companies today. Take a look at a couple of uh, stocks there. As you start to work through that list, trading, trading really becomes fun because now you're like, I know exactly what I'm looking for. And if it's there, great. I'm going to trade with conviction with the right position size. If it's not there, I know now immediately that means that I could still take stock specific ideas, but I need to work my position size a little bit more smartly because the big picture is not on my side. And this is really where trading just becomes fun because now you're not overwhelmed. It becomes easier because you're literally seeing on the screen, this is the progression. It's, is the market obvious? What sectors are obvious? What industry groups, let's say solar or semiconductors, and then we go into the specific stocks that are leading there. I know it's tempting to trade penny stocks and that kind of stuff. And I completely get it. We had that conversation about Tilray yesterday. <clears throat> Not necessarily a penny stock, but um, it's just easier to, to track where the smart money's going and then just look for a spot to hop on board. 
we're starting to see some new members, especially in the boot camp, where there's, there's kind of like this light bulb gets turned on, where prior to coming into the boot camp, it was a lot more difficult than it needed to be. So if you choose to stay here with us on social media, that's fine. If you want to learn about the boot camp, click the link below the video. But I just want to share this with you because there's a lot of people here in our community, both on social media and especially in the boot camp, that really have a passion for trading and just can't get past that. Uh, you know, you know everything, but you're not making money yet, or you're making money, giving it back, making money, giving it back. The kind of stuff that we're talking about right now is really about positioning yourself with the right expectations for the trade. Some trades are amazing. You have everything on the screen. Some trades only have one thing that you see on the screen. You can still take those trades, but you need to learn to work that position just a little bit more and work your way into that position a little more. And I, and I think that it gets worded pretty properly here, um, the way Ranesh talked about it in the community yesterday, um, which is it's about position sizing and consistency. When you have the right position size, um, I, I, I want to go back up here just for a second, because when you have the right position size, it actually makes trading stress-free. I, I, I know that sounds kind of crazy. A lot of people like trading stress-free. That's nuts. It absolutely is. because if, And here's, here's where position sizing and risk come hand in hand. Let's say you put the trade on. Well, first of all, raise your hand if you've ever been shaken out of a trade. Every one of us has been shaken out of a trade, right? But once you advance in your trading development and your trading skills, you get to a point where you understand it's there's certain situations where you could max out and trade bigger. But for the most part, most trades, you'll read every single trading book you read, no matter what, you see every one of them talking about putting on that first piece and adding as it moves in your favor, adding as it moves in your favor. Now, you might necessarily not do that with day trading as much, but absolutely for the longer term position type ideas. But here's here's something that will radically change the way you see the market. I'll let that sink in for a second because I'm pretty excited about this. When you are trading, it's more important to know prior to the trade how much you're willing to risk based on the quality of the idea and based on the size of your trading account. It could be 1% of the money you allocate. It could be half a percent. But here's where this it sounds like a common thing, but here's where it makes a dramatic difference in your trading. If you go into that trade, and I'm just going to throw a number out there. If you go into the trade saying, I'm willing to risk 300 on this idea because that's how much I'm willing to risk based on the idea itself. You know, Think about that, stacking that pyramid again, and how much money I have in my account. Before you even put the trade on, you're like, okay, I'm okay risking that because I think I could make two or three times that on this idea. And if I lose that on this trade, if it doesn't follow through... I'm okay with that because of the size of my account and how much I like this idea. Think about how different that is. If that stock starts to move against you and you're panicking, you're moving your stop loss, you're like what? searching Google, what, what did I miss? Why is the stock going down? As opposed to saying, all right, that didn't follow through. I'm just going to kick it out or scale out and look for the next month, next trade. I'll make it back on the next trade. You eliminate the stress of losing money because you've already agreed that's the right risk at that moment. It changes everything. And as Rinesh said here, that you become consistent because now you're learning how to trade as opposed to your heartbeat going up and down with every, oh, I'm making money. Oh, I'm losing money. Oh, I'm making money. Oh, I'm losing money. You just start to relax. And now you just focus on being a better trader and flawlessly executing the edge. Trading can be fun when it's done properly. These are all the little pieces that need to, you know, one little piece here and there. And all of a sudden, this all adds up where you're like, pretty darn interesting. Pretty darn interesting. All right. So now I actually want to get into some of the ideas. We're actually going to talk about some of the um, interesting stuff that's going on today. Uh, obviously, the Fed came out. Um, I, I thought this was pretty interesting. Uh, taper tantrum. <laughs> I never saw that quote before, but that's pretty interesting. So what, what happened yesterday, right? We actually talked about it yesterday morning. I said it was lining up as sell the news. It was just a question of the language. So what they what they said after the fact was they said exactly what we expected. We're tapering. We're, we're pulling back. The language that the market liked in a big way was what they said about interest rates. So interest rates are going to be the big topic of conversation now going forward between now and next June, which is that we're not raising now. They're talking about second quarter of next year. So that's why the market exploded today. But I'm still sticking to my, we're probably going to see a little bit of a sell the news because all that pressure is off the market right now with the indecision. The market hates indecision. 
Now we got to think about the fact that we've rallied five weeks into that uh, moment. So what we're going to, and I'm kind of glad we started out what we just talked about because now the market itself is probably going to see a little bit of, okay, let's let it breathe a little bit. So now we work our way up the pyramid and now we start to find some stock specific and sector specific ideas, which is what I promise. We're going to get into that right now. Okay. Uh, we also said we're going to talk about um, electric vehicle charging stock. So we're going to get into that right now as well, uh, which is over here. We're going to take a look at these three, BLNK, CHPT, and EVGO. So this is obviously electric vehicles have been on fire, for lack of a better way of putting it. Um, so let's just take a look at these three, give you some ideas. And now we're getting a lot more um, stock specific and industry group specific. So you can see CHPT, again, hopefully you're starting to learn the language that we're talking about here every day. Uh, push up and pause, push up and pause, push up and pause, push up and pause. We're seeing some pretty clean order flow right now. The challenge with getting involved in CHPT right now is that we got once, twice, and now three times it had trouble getting over 26, 2650. So I still like the idea here, but I like it better over this. So this is kind of cool here right now, because if you think about what we just talked about in just this two seconds on CHPT, I like the idea but the expectation for follow through needs to get through 2650. So that means that this is a two position trade for me. The first one prior to 2650 on this current pause, which yesterday turned into a bullish U-turn and better position over 2650. So this is a two position trade for me. So if we look at a couple of the other ones, which was Blink and EVGO, just to get a feel for what's going on in the industry group, BLNK. Let me make this a little bigger for you so it's easier to see. So we got a push and a pause, but you can see what BLNK has done. He really hasn't done much for a while. So out of the two of them, as of right now, I like ChargePoint, CHPT, a lot better. And EVGO, which is starting to what we call come off the mat, and we're starting to see a little bit of buying pressure there. So out of the three of those in this group right here, uh, I, I'm watching CHPT the most right now. And I give Lynn Ramirez in our community all the credit in the world for consistently bringing that one um, into the community. Uh, I thought this was interesting, too. I don't know if everybody saw this um, trade station. I know I personally use trade station going public with the SPAC. Uh, that's going to be something pretty interesting to keep an eye on. Uh, again, we just mentioned MGM before. Penn earnings came out. We're going to talk about Penn and we're going to talk about um, Roku, which got hit yesterday. So Penn is actually down. They haven't seen anything. So, again, there's nothing to do here. We're not bottom fishing. We're not looking for it on the way down. Same thing as Roku. We're not bottom fishing. No way. Leave it alone. I'm not touching it right now. The other side of the trade, though, we are looking at some uh, that are pushing higher after some significant numbers. So you can see here now, 9.5% Qualcomm. Qualcomm is going to be in our radar today. Now, it's trading beyond this level by a mile. It's trading up at 151 and change. So it's all the way up here now, punching through these resistance levels. So now we need to see it hold today's opening price. Same thing with FSLR is another one that we are looking for coming off of this level, but FSLY is the one that had a 5% gap after earnings. So I'm giving you, we're working through the rotation right now in some stocks that had earnings, but I want to, I want to start working our way through the list because that's actually why everybody's here, right? You want some new ideas. We're going to start out with the top of the list here in consumer cyclical and work our way down in the list here. Okay. So on the consumer cyclical side, we keep mentioning LCID again, sticking with this theme you can see it's actually up again, this $28 breakout. Hopefully you participated in that one with us. Uh, QS is another one that we've been watching. You can see, again, getting right up to that level. Uh, ironically, GME exploded yesterday, so we're looking for some follow-through there as well. Uh, congratulations to, I just want to say, uh, Jeremy in our community. Jeremy had, um, we had a conversation about this early in the week. Cole's on the breakout. You can see it pretty clearly. Uh, and actually traded right up into resistance. Uh, really big uh, move yesterday. He actually booked profits up into that resistance. Now we're looking for it to pause at this level and then looking for the next trade um, through that level. So I want to I want to continue with consumer cyclical now so you have some ideas. Tesla remains one of the top stocks, uh, pausing and holding right near that breakout level again. Uh, BBWI, maybe not a common stock that most people trade, but some really good follow through. And again, you're starting to see the patterns of a push and a pause and a push, getting some follow through there as well. Uh, again, now I want to work our way over into healthcare, which has been uh, something we've been talking about for the better part of a couple of weeks. And if you remember, it started lower on the list, 
started working its way up, very similar to what we're looking at in industrial stocks right now, which is going to be the next group of stocks that we're going to take a look at. So again, I, I want to stress this and I want to talk about this because if you remember, if you've been watching with us for, um, let's say for the last couple of months, even the last six months, um, we watched uh, energy stocks sort of have bearish order flows start to come off the mat. We started telling everybody, start putting this in your tracking journal. And then they went on fire for about two months. So we were trading them. Now they're kind of sideways, work their way down the list. We're starting to see industrial stocks work their way up the list. And we're going to start to point that out. But more importantly, the whole point in that is when we talk about this every day, take a snapshot of it and track it with us because you start to see ideas before you start to see them on the headlines. That's how you become a real trader. That's how you really become in charge of the process. You're not waiting to read a headline on the Wall Street Journal. You are seeing the order flow change. And by the time it hits that headline, well, you know what? <laughs> when you see energy prices, how high can they go on Newsweek? That's when we started to come down. It's kind of classic, right? So now we're going to take a look at some healthcare stocks because they've been creeping higher uh, and actually some earnings this morning um, as well. So let's let's jump back into the list. Uh, and we want to head on over CNC. If you remember, we mentioned this one yesterday, traded into a gigantic bullish engulfing candlestick. Um, TDOC, which is kind of what we call coming off the mat, if we zoom this out a little bit. Uh, and you can see here, three, these are the three weeks that we look at, and we're seeing it creep up the list before it starts to hit. So this longer term move to the downside, if we learn to work these charts a little bit, which is what I strongly uh, encourage you to do. Just keep it. doesn't need to be complicated. It just needs to be um, reliable, right? Um, Amgen. Somebody asked about Amgen this morning, trading a little bit neutral, but you can see this right here is where the long was for us in Amgen. CVS, if you remember, we spoke about this breakout here in CVS two weeks ago, and you can see the levels that CVS is exploding into now. Now, I would not be looking to initiate a new swing trade in CVS today. I'd actually be looking to move up my trailing stop. If you remember, we've been talking about Eli Lilly all week. We've been paying attention to this order flow here. Now, the challenge here is the same thing that we just looked at in Kohl's, uh, a little bit of a limited upside based on what the stock has done recently. That's the price that sellers have come in. Uh, so probably got one more day, maybe two days. BBY, one of the swing trades that we had in the community yesterday, if you remember, we've been mentioning probably for a couple of weeks now that in our tracking journal, we had BBY. That's been the level we've been looking for it to get through. And uh, in the community yesterday, uh, just to show you um, that we are authentic in uh, everything that we're talking about, you can see we had the BBY stop by stop yesterday with how the parameters are all laid out. You can see some of the alerts uh, and you can see the BBY order was filled. So uh, we are putting our, <laughs> we're putting it where we talk about every day. So BBY through this breakout level, I like quite a bit right now. Uh, again, so we're sticking with the rotation here. We're, we're looking at some healthcare stocks. We got off the track there for one second, but that's okay. Uh, Kevin and a couple of people are asking about that one. Um, so we're going to work our way over here and we want to finish up. Uh, we just mentioned LLY. That's one that we've been on top of for a while now. It's some really nice price action there. Yesterday, UNH has been incredibly tradable over the last, since earnings actually here. This, this trade right here was probably the cleanest. Uh, earning, bullish earnings came out, paused for three days, and then exploded. Yesterday traded into a bullish U-turn as well as a uh, snapback trade, what we call in our community. Um, I just want to go over to one other one that we uh, nailed yesterday as well, which was HLT. Uh, for those of you that are in the community, you know that we called this out as a uh, early day. We actually had four different snapback trades play out yesterday, which is just incredibly, incredibly exciting. Um, the other one I want to point out today is CERN in uh, healthcare. You can see that it just exploded. Now, this is a little bit hard to get involved with after the stock has now just rallied. Probably the biggest bullish rally it's had in months. Um, so now we're looking for a pause here and then looking for a push up. So remember, every day we talk about tracking journal and then trading game plan some trades are tradable today they go and i want to point out a couple of them in a second uh some of them are tradable today some of them are awesome but we might be chasing a little bit so cern in the right industry group and the right sector so i'm waiting for cern to pause before the next push however net net uh moving over into technology this is actually pausing perfectly uh so you can see a push and a pause a push and now a three-day pause looking for this to um, head back up again. So again, we're sticking with this right now. I want to point out a couple of industrial stocks that have actually been pretty good 
uh, and looking for some follow through. Some of them are already going. Some of them we've been talking about. Uh, car, obviously, don't give up on this stock. The volatility here is amazing. Should be on every active trader's uh, watch list right now. Just from a perspective, it's got volatility and it has liquidity. Remember, those are the two biggest things. If, if you're new to trading, we had a lot of questions on last night's coaching call again. Um, that I, I'll show you the list of questions again, but a lot of questions about being prepared and what type of stocks to trade, but more importantly, how to build a watch list that you look at every day. Do you look at the bigger picture of everything or do you kind of trade the same stocks every day? And the answer is yes to both. <laughs> Once you're organized and you set up your software, and again, we do all of this for you at the boot camp where you're understanding how to set up your watch list, understanding how to set up your charts, understanding how to stack the order flow. Um, then the trading part of it is really just sitting back and looking for entries. But the, the, the thing that is required for active traders, which is two things, volatility and volume. Liquidity on the volume side means that you can get in and out reasonably. If you hit that bid to get out of a trade or you want to get in quickly, you have enough liquidity to get good, reasonable prices, especially if you use a stop limit order. I never use a mar I shouldn't say never. I never use market orders because I'm at my screen and I understand how to place those orders. Uh, the second one is volatility. You need to balance uh, the right amount of volatility that you can handle with, you don't want to trade too little volatility because you won't make any money. You'll protect the downside, but you won't make any money. Uh, and then the upside is how much can you handle when it does move and how do you handle it uh, from a profit taking perspective? So I just want to recap that one second. Active traders, and we're bringing up car as an example. Active traders want liquidity, which means average volume per day. And volatility is that little that balance that you really need to work yourself through with um, being OK with I can get in or out anytime I want and I have a good chance of making money. So we're, we're in industrial stocks right now, getting back to the list. So they're starting to work their way up the list. So I'm going to be focusing on some industrial stocks right now. So car is in that list. Plug remains in that list. Pulled back a little bit yesterday, traded back Z.I.M., there's another one that you can see broke the downtrend, starting to work its way up to the upside. BE is in that list. PCAR is in that list. Honeywell is kind of near a breakout level, but not yet. But I think UPS is probably one of the top stocks that I'm taking a look at um, in this area um, right now. Um, so I wanted to uh, make sure that we had a ton of ideas. Uh, I'm going to put back on the screen the topics that we talked about last night because I want to inspire you. Uh, to think about, are you thinking about your trading at a high enough level? That's a big deal. So I'm going to put that back on the screen right now, um, right here, so that you can take a look at the questions. If you want to take a snapshot of that, this is just the topics that we talked about on last night's coaching call. That's a pretty big deal, right? Um, I want to answer a question that somebody asked here um, from Paul. Um, We'll be joining the boot camp to help me overcome being a break even trader. Yes. I, I can't express this strongly enough. I just want, I want to finish up on this because we have to head into our other um, game plan meeting. Uh, the boot camp game plan meeting starts after this one. Um, there's, we talk about this all the time. And if you haven't heard me talk about it, the first thing you need to do when you first start trading, get out of your head. You're, you're going to start making money uh, without having any skill. It's like, I want to be a doctor. I studied, you know, I studied a medical journal last week. I got five days experience. I want to go and do surgery now. When you choose to open a trading account, you've now officially become a money manager. There's no other way to put it. You're managing your money. And I got a question for you. <laughs> would you hire yourself? If somebody gave you a million dollars. Would you hire yourself right now to share in the profits and losses? That's the question we have to ask ourselves, and that's going to be the appropriate stages of what we need to learn first. So if somebody gives you a million dollars right now with your current level of experience and you're responsible for the losses, the first thing you need to learn is how to manage the downside because there's two stages that everybody needs to go through, and they're pretty clear, pretty obvious. I'm doing this since 2000. I know these are fact, absolute fact. The first thing is you need to learn what not to do. There's not even a question about that because there's so many traders that are smart, can't figure out why they can't make money, but they keep doing what doesn't work. They want to stick with what doesn't work. First is learning what not to do. Make a big list of what not to do. So now you're learning what not to do. You're learning to manage the downside. And just as importantly, you're gaining experience with not focus on I'm making money, I'm losing money. I'm making money, I'm losing money. If your main focus from the start is I need to learn how to make money right away, it's going to be tough for you to learn. You want to learn First, 
So learn what not to do. After you learn what not to do, you're around long enough. So may, maybe now you're breaking even. Maybe you're learning. You're losing a lot less. You're kind of making a little lose. So the answer to that is yes, Paul. That's the first goal. The second step now is while you're gaining that experience is you need to learn how to make more on your winning trades. I can't stress strongly enough. If you go right into I've never traded before or I'm not making money and you want to just go straight into I want to make money, I want to make money, I want to make money, you're, you have the wrong focus. You want to think and act like a pro. Of course, we all want to make money, but we first need to learn how to make money. In order for us to learn how to make money, we first have to learn how to be around long enough, which means learning how to not lose money. Not lose money is position sizing, developing an edge, understanding, understanding that pyramid that we showed you before. Once you understand what you're looking at, the next step is then understanding how to trade bigger, how to hold longer, and how to make more on your winners. If you follow that path, which is the exact path we talk about in the boot camp, what I just showed you those questions before, those are all beginner questions. We didn't that we have another call on Monday that Monday's call was almost two hours. That's how much in depth we go into wanting to make sure we give everybody personalized help. So stick to that path where ask yourself, did I trade flawlessly today? Flawless trading because you know what you're doing and you have predictable outcomes because you know exactly what you're looking at. Flawless trading is what leads to account growth. That's the part that you want to get to. You want to get to the point where you're in control of the outcome. Tough days, you lose a little. Good days, you make more. That's good trading. That's up to you. All right. Thank you so much for watching today, everybody. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. If you have follow-up questions, leave them below the video. I always get back to everybody. And uh, if you liked what we talked about today, do me a favor, smash that like button and uh, hit subscribe. I really appreciate it. Every day, 7.30 a.m., make sure you join us. We have a lot of fun here. Have an awesome day, everybody. I'll speak to you soon.